The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. All right. So we're gonna to review today during class time. There's no office hour this afternoon during finals week. There really isn't any class. This is just an extra thing I'm doing. Also tomorrow morning, I'll be here at 11.30 as well. Uh, your final exam is on Wednesday. It needs to be completed by 11.59 p.m. Wednesday night. Having said all of that, what have you got for me? What would you like to look at? Um, I kind of went through my notes and my uh, work in my notebook mm -hmm. and um so i was wondering if we can have a refresher refresher on factoring by grouping and perfect squares the difference and oh sure so factoring yeah all right let me pull out my textbook and get some examples of problems so chapter six we said by grouping and then difference of two squares. So that would be like six. You know what I'm going to do? I thought you were going to be asking stuff from WebAssign, and since you're not, I'm going to just switch back to my regular screen here. Or maybe you will later. That's okay if you do. Uh, let's see here. All right. Just a second here. I, I have more to ask too, but yeah, that's fine. That's fine. No, I'm just <laughs> I, I was set set up for a certain way, and that's not what you folks are asking to start with. Not a problem at all. Okay, so you want something to do with factoring by grouping? Kind of review that. How about uh, let's see? Let's take this one. So. 20y squared minus 93y minus 35. So this is a trinomial. It's in descending powers of the variable y. There's no greatest common factor we can take out of all three terms. So a is 20, b is negative 93, and C is negative 35. Okay. So far, so good? Yes. All right, where did this problem go? All right, here we go. All right. So the product is gonna be A times C. Well, let's see here. If we take negative 35 times 20, we get negative 700. And the sum is going to be B, which is negative 93. Okay. Okay. So I'm looking for two numbers whose product is negative 700 and whose sum is negative 93. To get a negative product, you've got to have a positive factor and a negative factor. Yes. To get a negative sum, the negative factor would have to be larger. So I'm looking for a large negative number and a small positive number, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just start at negative 701. That gives me the correct product. As a sum, it gives me negative 699, long ways away from where I wanna be. Negative 700 is uh, even, so let's cut it in half and then double the second one. We still have a product of negative 700, but now our sum is negative 348. I can cut negative 350 in half, and that's going to be what? Negative 175 and 4, mm -hmm. which is going to give me negative 171. Hmm. Well, 175 isn't even, so I can't cut it in half, so I can't take a 2 out. I can't take a 3 out. I can take a 5 out. So if I take negative 175 divided by five, I get negative 35, and then I'm gonna multiply by five, so I'm gonna get 20 there, okay? And that's gonna give me a sum that's gonna be what? Negative 15. So, hmm, I've gone too far, right? Because 
negative 93 is right in here. So one of my numbers needs to be between negative 175 and negative 35. The other one needs to be between four and 20. Well, there's less numbers between four and 20. So I'm gonna look there, okay? okay? Well, let's see. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, et cetera, et cetera. All right, five goes in. How many times would five go in? Let's see, 700 divided by five, negative would be negative 140. That's gonna give me what, negative 135. Does six go in? No. Seven goes in. Oh, seven goes in how many times? <laughs> negative 100, there's the two numbers. It was right there in front of me the whole time. Okay? So now I've got 20y squared minus 100y plus 7y minus 35. Again, you remember how you split the middle term into two terms of coefficients are those two numbers? Yes. And then factoring by grouping, greatest common factor of the first two terms, 20y leftovers y minus five, leftovers y minus five, we have a plus seven out there. So we get y minus five, 20y plus seven, and we're done with that one. You want another one of those? Nope, that's fine. I just right. was making sure I had a review on it. <laughs> and then um, you said difference of two squares. Um, no, I think that with this, it kind of reminded me of the two squares. Okay. Um, I can't pronounce this word. It's the <laughs> hypotenuse. Hypotenuse? Okay. Yeah, the formula for that. Specifically the rise and ramp and run. I had really difficulties with that when we did Okay, so let's see. We're talking. Hmm. Can I think of where that would be? Hang on. I don't think. Okay, yeah, this is like from 6.8 applications of quadratic equations. Mm -hmm. um, and you said to do with the. The rise, ramp, and run. The rise, ramp, and run. Okay. Um, let's see here. Maybe, I don't know if this is the one you were thinking of, but I'll put it out there and you can tell me. This is, it says car repairs. Wait, no, 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 boating. Um, the inclined ramp of a boat launch shown in the yes. column, and I'll draw the picture, is eight meters longer than the rise of the ramp. And the run is seven meter longer, meters longer than the rise. How long are the three sides of the ramp? And what you've got is this picture. And this says run, this says rise, and then you've got this truck, lovely truck, pulling a boat, yada, yada. Okay, so it says, <laughs> I know, I'm not an art teacher, just a con artist. The inclined <laughs> ramp of the boat launch shown in the next column is eight meters longer than the rise. <laughs> so if the rise is X, this would be X plus eight. Okay. The run is seven meters longer, so the run would be x plus seven. Okay. So you've got your right triangle with x, x plus seven, and x plus eight. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to find the length of the three sides. So because this is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A and b are the legs, c is always the hypotenuse. So this is gonna be A and B and C, okay? Okay. So I've got the following, X squared plus the quantity X plus seven squared equals the quantity X plus eight squared. So X squared plus X plus seven times X plus seven equals X plus eight times X plus eight. Foiling x squared plus x squared plus 7x plus 7x plus 49 equals foiling x squared plus 8x plus 8x plus 64. Combining like terms on the left side, we get 
2x squared plus 14x plus 49 equals, combining like terms on the right side, x squared plus 16x plus 64. This is a second degree equation. I'm going to shove everything over to the left side. So I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides, subtract 16x from both sides, and subtract 64 from both sides. I get x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. So factoring, I get x minus 5 and x plus 3. So x is 5, x is negative 3. However, since x represents a distance, it can't be negative. So this would be 5, 12, and 13, and the units were meters. All righty. Okay. Something else like that or what? Um, nope, I think that that's good. I just wanted to make sure I'm getting the review on it because mm -hmm. my brain will um, shut down. <laughs> sure, sure. Antonia, how about you? I yeah, I wanted to go over um, more on. Let me show you more on um, chapter six. Um, okay. And um, it was um, question number 16. Okay, hang on. So number 16 on what part of chapter six? Uh, it's, uh, chapter six review. Okay, okay. Oh no, my test, it was my test. Okay, so the chapter six test, mm -hmm. let me pull it up here. Number 16, you said? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, it says, refer to the diagram of a sail shown below, and I will make an attempt at drawing a picture of the sail. <laughs> I say, make an attempt. All right, so we've got this sail, and this is called the foot, and this is called the loof, and this is a right triangle, okay? It says, refer to the diagram, the length of the loof is three times longer than the length of the foot of, oh, hang on, oh, I need to open up the thing longer, okay, sorry, I didn't have the, the, Thing open it up to read the whole thing. The length of the loof is three times longer than the length of the foot of the sail. Find the length of the foot, the length of the loof. All right. And we're told in the picture that the area is 24 square feet. Okay. That's given. Now, the length of the loof is three times the length of the foot. So if the foot is X, the loof would be 3x. Now, how do I know whether this is to use the Pythagorean theorem or to use the area formula? Well, the fact that it gives the area, okay, and it doesn't tell us enough information about the third side, so we're going to use the area equals one half the base times the height, okay? Okay. So so 24 equals one half times X times three X. 24 equals three halves X squared. I'm gonna multiply both sides by two to clear out the fraction. 48 equals three X squared. This is a second degree equation. So I'm going to put it in standard form. So zero equals three X squared minus 48. I'm gonna take out the greatest common factor. Ah, this is good because Karina, you talked about the difference of two squares and that's what we're gonna have here. Zero Perfect. equals three <laughs> times X plus four times X minus four. So either x equals negative four or x equals four from these two factors. 
Again, we're dealing with a distance, so it couldn't be negative four. So this is four and this is 12 and the units were feet. So that's 12 feet and this is four feet. Okay with that? Yes. All righty. What else? I have a question. Um, would it be possible? Do, do, can we see the, um, the questions we got wrong on the, on the test when we log in on our website? Or we can't? I don't know. Yes. Does it, it does uh, now. I can it's, find them if you want. I can. So you, uh, you want yeah, what, yeah, what chapter? Um, I, I want to be, um, because I'm going to be working, um, normally get on, on math since I don't have time for, you know, before like at one 30, I would go with the math center. So I would like to, um, I'm going to be reviewing all the chapters, but I just want to make sure because it wouldn't let me see my, um, like the uh, questions I was getting wrong. Okay. So what is it you want me to do? Uh, if you, uh, if there was a way I could see those or give me permission, um, if I'm not able to see them, I'll send you a text. Let me see if I, um, let me log in my web assign and see if I'm able to. I know that when I was looking at web assign earlier, cause I did before we had class and, uh -huh. and the chapter review, it let me see the ones that I was getting wrong. Like it would tell me what, what I got wrong. It wouldn't uh -huh. give me the answer, but it showed me what I got wrong. And the that chapter? Yeah, for the chapter review. Oh yeah, no, I was asking like for the chapter test. Oh. If, uh, I don't know if we could get a chance to just revise the ones we got wrong. Is there a way we could do it? Um, well, we can work on that now. We've got about 40 minutes. Okay. Um, and I would like to go then. Um, I would like to work on, um, where's my question I've been working on? Um, same um, chapter six test on uh, number 14. Okay. Um, it up here. Okay, let me do this. Do you care if everybody sees which ones you missed? Nope. Okay, then I'll just put it up there. Give me just a second here. Uh, there we go. Here. Yeah, now I'm going to go back to the way I had the screen set up before. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Fortunately, I'm getting a little better at this. A little bit anyway. Okay, so. All right. There. You said which one, 14? Yes. 14, okay. So can you see 14 on your yes. screen there? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, solve the equation. So we've got T times T minus two times T plus two equals zero. The nice thing is this is not only in standard form, but it's set equal to zero and factored. So all I need to do now is take each factor on the left side and set it equal to zero. Well, if t equals zero, then t equals zero. If two minus two equals zero, t minus two equals zero, add two to both sides, we get t equals two. T, oh, I've copied this incorrectly, my bad, hang on. Hang on, this is a seven right here. All right. If T plus seven equals zero, subtract seven from both sides, T equals negative seven. So your answer's zero to negative seven. 
Okay. Alrighty. What other ones? And Karina, if you come up with some other ones in the meantime, we can look at those as well. Okay. I well, <clears throat> I'm I'm ready for chapter seven on a couple things, but I'm fine with doing a review because I might see something that I'm like, oh, that's okay. How you do it. <laughs> All right. So Antonia, anything else on the chapter six test? Yes. Uh, number eight. Oops. Okay, factor. So we've got 15a plus 16a cubed minus 46a squared. So this is a trinomial. The first thing I'm going to do is rewrite it in standard form. So descending powers of a. The next thing I'm going to do is take out the greatest common factor, which is an A. Okay. And then I'm going to factor the trinomial. Do you want me to use trial and error or grouping? Grouping. Okay. So A is 16, B is negative 46, C is 15. The product is, let's see here, 15 times 16 is. 240 and the sum is negative 46. All right, the product is positive, which means the signs of the factors have to both be the same, both positive or both negative. But since the sum is negative, you're not gonna get there by adding two positive numbers. Conclusion, the signs have to both be negative, okay? So let's try negative 240 and negative one. That would give us a sum of negative 241. How about cutting it in half and doubling it? That would give us a sum of negative 122. Cutting it in half and doubling it, that would give us a sum of negative 64. Cut it in half and double it, that would give us a sum of negative 38. Oh, negative 46 is in between here. So one of my numbers is between negative 60 and negative 30. And the other one is between negative four and negative eight. Well, I'm going to go with between negative four and negative eight because it's got to be either negative five, negative six, or negative seven. Well, negative seven doesn't go into 240, so it's got to be negative five or negative six. Let's try negative five first. Negative five, and then this would be what? Negative 48, which would be negative 53. Negative six and negative 40. Aha, there we go. Negative six and negative 40, the sum would be negative 46. So I've got a times 16a squared minus 40a minus 6a plus 15. So far, so good? Yes. Factoring by grouping? Outside A, inside we've got, let's see, 8A times 2A minus 5, 2A minus 5, and a minus 3 outside. So A times 2A minus 5 times 8A minus 3. And there you go. Perfect. What else? We can move to um, chapter seven. Okay. Karina's questions. Okay. Hang on just a second here. Let's see here. Okay. So Karina, chapter seven, what, the test? or something else. I think I wanted to go over the review because I put review, review okay. beside my note on there. <laughs> so. Chapter seven review coming up. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here it is. Um, 
Um, specifically, I think it was um, this one right here. Yeah. All right. Number six. Number six. Yes. Excellent. Find the perimeter and the area of the LED screen of the camera. Simplify your answer completely. All right. So we've got a rectangle, the screen, and we know that the I'm going to say the horizontal distance is 4 over x plus 6. And the vertical distance is 3 over x minus 1. OK? So we'll call this the length and this the width. The perimeter of a rectangle is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So the perimeter would be 2 times the quantity 4 over x plus 6 plus 2 times the quantity 3 over x minus 1. All right? Mm -hmm. Which would be 8 over x plus 6 plus 6 over x minus 1, multiplying the 2 times 4 and the 2 times 3. OK? Mm -hmm. To get them into a single fraction, the LCD would be x plus 6 times x minus 1. Are you OK with that? Yes. So I'm going to multiply this first fraction by x minus 1 over x minus 1. So my numerator is going to be 8x minus 8. My denominator will be the LCD. The second fraction, I'm going to multiply by x plus 6 over x plus 6. The numerator will be 6x plus 36 over the LCD. Combining the two numerators, I have 8x minus 8 plus 6x plus 36 over the LCD, which is 14x plus 28 over the LCD. Now. I could factor a 14 out of the top and have 14 times x plus 2, but the denominator doesn't contain a factor that would reduce with the 14 or the x plus 2. So okay. this is going to be my perimeter. All right? Okay. The area is length times width, so that's going to be 4 over x plus 6 times 3 over x minus 1, which is going to be 12 over x plus 6 times x minus 1. So in this case, it's much easier to get the area than the perimeter. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's all I had for that one. OK. So now what? Does Antonia have anything else that she wants to go over for seven? Yes, I do. Okay. Let me, I'm just grabbing my questions. Let me see. Is this from the review or the test or what? Um, the test. Okay. Chapter seven. All right. Here's the chapter seven test. Um, yeah. So I'm um, looking um number six. I believe that when I got it wrong. Was that number six? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like you didn't do it. You left it blank. That one, yeah. Okay. That one, uh, Solve the equation and check the result. Enter your answers as a comma separated list. If there is no solution, enter no solution. OK, so we've got the following. x plus 6 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 1. I can take the denominator of the second term and factor it into x 
let's see, x minus five times x plus two. Okay. So now I see that my LCD is x minus five times x plus two. Are you okay how I got that? Yes. So now I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by x minus five times x plus two. x minus five, x plus two. On the left side, I get x minus five times x plus two times x plus six over x plus two. And then x minus five times x plus two times one over x minus five times x plus two equals, and multiplying that all out, one times x minus five times x plus two is x minus five times x plus two. So I can just drop the one. All right, now multiplying here, the x plus twos are gonna go, and I'm gonna have x minus five times x plus six, which is x squared plus six x minus five x minus 30. Here, the x minus fives and the x plus twos are gonna go, and I'm just gonna have plus one. And on the right side, I'm gonna have x squared plus two x minus five x minus 10. Combining like terms on the left side, I get x squared plus x plus 29, oh, excuse me, minus 29. Ah. minus 29 equals on the right side, x squared minus three x minus 10. Okay, I have a second degree equation. I'm gonna subtract x squared from both sides, but now I have a first degree equation. So now I'm gonna put all the x's on one side. I'll put them on the left. Four x minus 29 equals negative 10. I'll add 29 to both sides. So I get 4x equals 19. Divide both sides by 4, and x equals 19 over 4, which is the only correct answer. And I know that because I can look over here and see that, oh, that's the correct answer. Something else from this section or test or whatever? I'm just finishing writing down okay. your steps. Alrighty. Yes, you have a very quite a fast writing on the computer. <laughs> um. <laughs> Faster than I can write on paper. <laughs> Uh, Same here. <laughs> yeah, I tend to write quickly. I wish I was like that, doing feel my homework. Feel free to yell, slow down, slow down. <laughs> okay. And the other one, when Karina's done, um, is the same one, but it was number five. Let's okay. see. I forget who's. Is this yours? Yeah, that's mine. So, so number five. Oh, yes. Uh, Karina, are you done writing? Oh yes. Okay. So, <laughs> number five coming up. Simplify the complex fraction. Okay, so we've got four divided by s squared, and the whole thing divided by one over s plus eight over three. So with a complex fraction, to change it into a simple fraction, we're gonna multiply both the numerator and the denominator 
by the least common denominator of all the little denominators. And the little denominators are S squared, S, and three. So the LCD would be three S squared. Is everybody okay with where I got that? Yes. Yes. So, okay, so I'm gonna multiply the top by three S squared and the bottom by three S squared. So I'm gonna multiply here and here and here, okay? So up on top, four over S squared times three S squared over one, the S squareds reduce out and I get 12. So the new numerator is 12. In the denominator, I'm gonna take one over S, not eight. Uh, I hate using this form because it takes so long when I make a mistake to go back and get the eraser. Oh, well, which are whining, sorry. <laughs> Am I talking to myself? <laughs> All right. So S squared over S is S, so I get what, three S, okay? And then here, plus eight over three times three S squared over one, the threes go and I have eight S squared. And that's as far as I can go. I could factor an S out of the bottom. So like, it would look like this. Oh wait, uh, S times three plus eight S, but that doesn't get me anywhere in terms of reducing it. So that's as far as we can go with it. Okay, I'm done with this one. So is, does Karina have any questions on that one? We could move forward. Nope, I don't. You good? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go to uh, what, chapter eight? Yes. If Karina's fine with that? Yep, I'm fine. I'm, my question for chapter eight was the variations, the directly, inversely, and jointly. Okay, hang on. Just a review to refresh my mind on just sure. a random question <laughs> okay so chapter eight uh, variation which i think was 8.9 you want that or do you want the review or the test um, whichever <laughs> Okay, well, let's go with 8.9 and see what that gets us. Uh, yeah, this looks like it's... Okay, hang on. All right. Um, so, I'm just kind of scrolling through here. I don't know if I missed any. I just know that I would like to have just a review on sure. that way I can remember the formula and it's in my head. Okay, okay. Um, tell you what, let's do number 11. Okay. First of all, let's review. There were three kinds of variation. There was direct. There was, uh, let's see, inverse. Mm -hmm. and joint variation. Direct variation is like y equals kx, where if, k, if x increases, y increases, if x decreases, y decreases, so they go up and down together, okay? Inverse variation, we had a reciprocal situation, so we had k over x, k was the variation constant, and joint variation, we had more than one variable, like as in a joint checking account on the right side of the equation. So, so here are your three types of variation, okay? okay? 
Do I need to leave that up there longer? No, no I'm good. Mm -hmm. okay. So back to number 11, solve the problem by writing a variation model. An object in free fall travels a distance S that is directly proportional. And they like to use the word proportional interchange with variation. So directly proportional would be direct variation. So it travels, let's see, an object in free fall travels a distance S that varies directly to the square of the time T. So you've got S equals K T squared. Now recall K, the variation constant, may not even be mentioned, but it's in every variation uh, situation. It's always in the numerator, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. If an object falls 70, 784 feet, so that's S, in seven seconds, and that's seven squared. Mm -hmm. Now this information will allow us to find K. So K is 784 divided by 89. Let's see, 784 divided by 49 which comes out nicely to 16. So then that's going to go back up here. Okay. Now, how far will it fall in 11 seconds? And again, don't forget to square the time. So then S is 16 times 11 squared, which is 121. And 16 times 1. 21 is 1936. No, that's not the year I was born. It's the year I graduated from preschool, whatever. Okay. <laughs> so 1936 feet. Thank you for that courtesy laugh. I'll take what I can get. My grandma was born in 1936. So I mean, hey. <laughs> I wasn't really. <laughs> I'm not that old. My grandma's up there. I was like, my grandma's up there. So I mean, your grandma. Thank you. I'm now being compared to your grandma. Okay. <laughs> That's why I don't. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else in, on uh, variation? You want a different kind or? Nope. I just wanted to refresh her on how okay. it was supposed to be. Okay. All right. Antonia, anything from you from chapter eight? Yes, and I'm, uh, I'm going to want to go over um, chapter eight, number four. Okay, give me a second here. Uh, let's see. Chapter eight. Is this from the test? Yes. Okay, chapter eight, chapter number four. In a proposal to some prospective clients, a prospective clients, a housing contractor listed the following costs. Fees, permits, miscellaneous, $13,000. Construction per square foot, $90. Okay, let's see here. Ah, the only thing that's wrong with your part A is mm -hmm. where did K come from? Oh, darn. <laughs> so it should, <laughs> it should, so for part A, uh, let's see here. C. You know uh, what? I got nervous. I get yeah. nervous. <laughs> well, that's going to be 90 F plus 13,000. And what I did with people in these, I gave them half credit because you had the right idea. You just changed variables. I oh even had God. one student who texted or emailed me and says, why is it wrong? Well, it's wrong because <laughs> you changed variables, which means it means something entirely different. And, but anyway, I know you understood the idea because you got this right, but yeah, yeah change the variables, that's all. So the clue right there is that the F was the input and C was the output. Okay. All right, anything else there? 
just writing because nope that was on that one that was it karina anything from you from chapter what is this eight Oh, I don't even remember if I missed the on chapter. <laughs> <laughs> I probably did. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you can look at my chapter reviews. I don't remember what it was or, you know, okay. or even the test. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see here. Okay. We'll take a look at the test. Okay. So. Uh, yes. <laughs> like, oh, yes, I did. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this. Find the domain of each function. So what X values can you use? Well, now you've, you've selected all real numbers except zero, but X is not in the denominator. So if X was zero, it would still be zero to the seventh power, which would be zero, which is okay. So it's gonna actually be all real numbers. numbers. Oh, okay. Here's where you have a restriction where you've got a problem because so for number one, part B, S of X equals four over seven X plus three. This, cannot equal zero, the entire denominator, okay? Okay. So if we take this and set it equal to zero and then solve it, we get that. But that makes the denominator zero, so it can't be negative seven thirds, negative th three sevenths, excuse me. So it'd be the set of all real numbers except negative three sevenths. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Um, let's see here. Ah. Now I think that the green graph, no, the black graph is the one you made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> green graph is the correct answer. So the issue here, you've got your y-intercept correct, but the mm -hmm. slope is negative four fifths. So from here, it would go down four, down four and over five. Not okay. Up. Okay, so yeah, graphing is not my forte. <laughs> yeah, I think nobody's. <laughs> oh, come on now, it's not that bad. <laughs> I get confused on which way it's supposed to be leaning. My, and which way it goes. I got used to it a little bit, like you know, the uh, rise and sure. yeah. but <laughs> always, slope. always do it from left to right. Yeah, so that's what I've been trying to and go over, or it's going to fall uh -huh. over. Yes. All right, um, let's see here. Let me get that one right. Good for you. You did put F in there, so good job. Um, is it right? I don't know. So I'm just going to kind of stroll by here, and if there's anything you want me to oh, okay. go over. I think it, the ones that are just the graphing of my own is where I struggled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that one as well. This one? All right, yeah. let's take a look at this one. And then we're going to call it quits for today. I'll be back tomorrow morning at 1130 and we can continue with this insanity if you want. All right. All right. <laughs> so number eight, solve the absolute value equation. We've got five minus X over three all equals negative eight. Oops, negative eight. Well, right off the bat, we're in trouble because an absolute value can't be a negative number. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Do you want me to continue? No. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to stop the recording.